for letting me join. And um, I, my name is Jackie Denny and I'm with MetLife Investment Management. Uh, we're an investment, or I work as in, uh, for a MetLife Insurance Company, which I'm sure a lot of folks have heard of. And I work within the investment arm for MetLife Insurance Company. And uh, over the past uh, five to seven years, we've really tried to um, grow our platform, our real estate investment platform as well as our third, just overall third party investment investment platform. And, and so now um, we have over 600 and close to $660 billion assets under management and in investments. In commercial real estate, we have about $106 billion. Um, 73 billion is roughly in our debt portfolio and approximately $33 billion in equity. So fairly substantial. Uh, when I was going to school and I went to the Cal Poly, so I'm really happy to be here talking to uh, some future alum, alumni. And uh, when I went to Cal Poly and I was in the, the FRL major, I had no idea that insurance companies had an investment group or even really invested that significantly into commercial real estate. And insurance companies are, they're one of the larger uh, institutional investors. So I just wanted to put it, you know, partly to just kind of put it on your radar, um, you know, that there's a lot of opportunities out there um, that you may not even be aware of. And one way to, you know, to uh, kind of understand what those opportunities might be is through your network and through joining organizations like um, ULI Young Leaders, it's, it's very affordable if you're under 35. Uh, NAOP, NAIOP also has a Young Leaders organization and you're, you know, you'll get access um, to a lot of different speakers that can talk about you know, different ways to kind of uh, you know, have a career in commercial real estate. Uh, a lot of people know brokers, you know, I think uh, uh, you, know, you have your investors, you have your brokers, you have your agents. Um, but this is, you know, or, or, or my career has been, you know, predominantly on the institutional real estate investment side. So I just wanted to make sure you also saw that opportunity. Um, I can tell you, you know, when I graduated, I, um, my, you know, and, and also the importance of your network and, and it is work. Um, but that work that you put in, you know, you'll, you'll definitely receive benefits from, but my first, my first job out of uh, Cal Poly I, I got through a friend of mine that I knew that worked in real estate. He was a broker for his dad's business. And I um, started doing real estate appraisals in the Inland Empire. And, uh, and then I went to Ernst & Young and was in their real estate advisory group. And then I worked at New York Life. I realized I really didn't have any kind of debt expertise. And I also wanted to be part of the deal. I didn't want to be a consultant to the deal. So I went to New York Life and their loan, and that's when I first realized, frankly, that life insurance companies have a, quite a large portfolio, debt and equity. Uh, and so I um, went to New York Life to work in their debt production. Uh, I decided I wanted to get, you know, try my hand at being a commercial real estate mortgage broker. I saw all of the fees that they were making on, the, <laughs> on your closing statements. And I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't look that hard. So I was a broker for a couple of years and I'll tell you just, I realized it wasn't really suited for me. And I really wanted to um, be in on the equity side of the business. And that's when I came to MetLife. And I joined MetLife, uh, I'd, at that point I'd been working, you know, uh, 15 years already. And I, and I joined MetLife in their debt production group. And I, and I knew I could do that position, but I was joining MetLife because they also had a very large equity portfolio, platform and portfolio. They weren't actively acquiring assets, but uh, I knew that they would eventually. And so I parked myself in their debt team and told my boss, as soon as there's an opportunity in acquisitions, I want, I want to be considered. And I was given that opportunity. And so I uh, headed up our acquisitions team in San Francisco at the time and, as, and asset management. And, and then, uh, you know, five years, or roughly eight years into, into that role, I moved to Los Angeles to head up our uh, investment group, our commercial real estate investment team in Los Angeles. And we cover basically Southern, the Pacific Southwest, it's Southern California, 
Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and Hawaii. And it's for all debt and equity investments, all your, you know, your basic property types, multifamily, industrial, retail, office, and hotels. Uh, there's a lot of interest in alternative property types right now on the institutional side. We're looking at um, variants of residential real estate, including single family rental, uh, affordable housing, manufactured housing. Um, we're looking at um, life bio life science. We're looking at medical office, self storage. You know, with with COVID and the uncertainty of you know where office is going, and you know retail has been a little crushed um, in in some areas, particularly in the mall space. Uh, you know, there's a real need and desire by a lot of institutional investors to diversify that portfolio. So, uh, so it's really kind of interesting times right now for real estate, I think, coming out of COVID and uh, how technology has had such a huge impact on, on real estate. Uh, we've been working from home for uh, almost exactly a year now uh, since, um, since we've had our work from home requirements. And and it's shockingly, you know, seamless. You know, um, I wouldn't say we're out there like with the absolute best technology. <laughs> you know, we're a life insurance company, but it's been really pretty amazing how seamless it has been um, in that we're able to work virtually. I'm sure you guys are all going to school virtually as well, so you kind of understand what it's like. And I appreciate everyone here, you know, for another Zoom call because I'm sure you're on Zoom calls literally all day long. Uh, that's my life too, but. But um, you know, we're, you know, we're um, we're hopefully seeing an end, you know an end to this as vaccinations you know start to increase. I think there's still concern that you know, and I mean, there, from what I'm just reading in the papers or you know reading on my phone, I should say, um, you know, things feel pretty good, but there's still a little bit of concern out there for either variants of um, of the virus or you know a fourth wave, frankly, in the winter time. But, uh, but yeah, we're all, you know, we're all trying to figure out, you know, other kind of property types that we can investment, invest in and what would make sense. So that's my little uh, intro. I would love to answer any questions that you might have, whether it's, you know, you know, investment strategy or career strategy or, um, you know, just, yeah, I'm open for discussion, basically. Can you give us an introduction of, uh, from the equity side and the debt side, working from both sides? You bet. Yeah. So um, on our debt portfolio, MetLife's, you know, a, a substantially, we're, we're one of the largest uh, life insurance company lenders in, in the country. Uh, I should back up and say we also have seven domestic offices um, and we're split up regionally. So I, you know, even if um, I have a client that I just did a deal with and they're looking at a property, they want to find financing in New York, it would be our New Jersey office that would handle that client. But on the debt side, yeah, we, um, you know, 80, approximately 80% 80 of our business last year was repeat business. So we do, you know, we're working with a lot of the same um, clients year after year. We're always trying to grow our client base uh, with new borrowers. Uh, we under, you know, we, a deal comes in and, you know, we underwrite it fairly similarly to how we would underwrite an acquisition. We're really going to focus on the cash flow. We're probably going to be a little bit more conservative on the debt side because, you know, your best case scenario is you're getting your 3% interest rate for 10 years or whatever, you know, whatever that is. You're not really going to get that appreciation or, you know, your, your, your you know, so your risk needs to really match your return. Um, and then, um, yeah, but it's really, you know, the same kind of underwriting skills that you're looking at. And then we also service our, our portfolio. Uh, so if a borrower has a question, I mean, 10 years is a long time to have a loan on a property. And we also do shorter term loans, floating rate loans. We have bridge kind of money available as well. But, um, you know, things come up that you don't think about. And so we're a lender that you can kind of call and talk to and say, hey, you know, I. You know, I didn't think I wanted to sell this property, but now I do. And what can, you know, how can we make that happen sort of thing? Uh, on, on the equity side, we have about $33 billion in, um, that's assets under management in our equity portfolio. That's third-party clients as well as our, the MetLife general account. So it's all those dollars that are invested for life, life insurance premiums um, uh, that we invest to make sure those can be paid out. 
And uh, we have our acquisitions team. It's a three person team that covers the Pacific Southwest region. And then we have an asset management team. And so we're, we're doing all the asset management in-house as well. We do hire third party property managers. They're, you know, kind of boots on the ground. Uh, and, you know, an asset manager is basically a CEO for that property, right? They're coming up with the strategy, uh, the analysis, you know, the, the tenants they want to, you know, lease to, the, the kind of financing you want to put into place based on your strategy. You never want your debt to control your strategy. Um, so you want to kind of think of that ahead of time. And um, I'd say, I would say, you know, the primary difference, you know, in underwriting on the acquisition side is, you're getting, you're getting deep into the weeds and acquisitions, right? You're not just looking at each expense category. You know, you have your, you know, your utilities and repairs and maintenance and your landscaping. Um, you know, on the debt side, you're going to look at all of those and you're going to, you know, kind of make sure that they feel like they're in place and those expenses make sense, right? But you're not going to dig super deep into those. On the acquisition side, you're looking at every every line item that makes up your repairs and maintenance. And what that is, is that a one-time cost? Is it a recurring cost because of how the property was constructed with the materials that are in the property itself? So you're, you're really looking deep in the weeds on an acquisition, um, but the fundamentals are really the same. And a, a good place to get those fundamentals is, is doing valuations, is, is commercial appraisal. Um, a, number, a number of people on our team you know, have an appraisal background and, you know, I use it every single day. So, I don't know if that's a good, I don't know if you want me to get more into detail um, in different aspects of asset management or in front, but, um, you know, what, you know, one thing I, I, we talked about before is our day on the job. And I would, I would love, since I'm a Cal Poly alumni and I'm tired of all these USC and UCLA folks always, you know, getting into our office, for a day on the job, I feel like I need to even the score a little bit here. Uh, as we usually, you know, we didn't do it last year just because everyone was just overwhelmed with, with frankly, uh, you know, managing the portfolio, uh, both the debt and the equity portfolio. But this year we'll likely do it and it'll be virtual again. Um, and it's really just an introduction and you get to hear from folks that, you know, that's their day to day. That's their day job is, you know, loan portfolio asset management or, equity asset management and, you know, and what they're considering, you know, what, what just it looks like, you know, their, their typical day. And uh, I think it's a great, you know, sort of introduction, you know, MetLife is a little bit unusual in that each of our offices has both equity and has both an equity team and a debt team in it, in each office. Our office is about 20 people. Um, we have about a $3 billion, $3.5 billion equity portfolio and about a $9 billion debt portfolio that we manage and service with, you know, with our 20 people. And in addition to doing new transactions, new debt, debt deals, as well as acquisitions. So it's pretty lean. Every position matters. Every person matters on that team. And, um, you, know, it, you know, the day on the job is kind of just a nice way to, to get a look-see uh, on what it's like to be in a in an environment like that, I think. Um, yeah, it's it's it, and and then we also have internships as well. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do it. We didn't do an internship last year. This is really kind of tough. I wish, you know, and we we're probably not going to do one this year just because the, the challenges with onboarding virtually for such a short period of time. Um, we're just not, you know, if, if we were in our our headquarters, still has internships. Um, there's just, you know, more people available to help there, but, um, but if anyone's interested in learning more, um, you know, certainly feel free to reach out and I'm, I'm more than happy to, you know, figure out what, you know, I can put you in contact with, you know, if a, there's a particular career that you're interested um, with folks, members on my team or, you know, and I can certainly chat about it. I have a question about the day on the job. How does that work virtually? Is it kind of like a recording of, of a specific person and then it's on Eventbrite or how does it really work? You know, I think we would just do it pretty simple and have it live, to oh. be honest. We just have like an hour and a half maybe. Um, and we're, we're, you know, I'll, uh, I'll have an introduction similar to what I did initially. And then I'll have our acquisitions. Wow. 
talk about, he usually does a um, case study. Victoria. So might have a couple of different, you know, like here's the deal, you're my investment committee, would you invest in this deal based on these returns? Why and why not? What do you like? What, what don't you like about the property? We'll have someone from asset management come in to talk about what they're, you know, what, what they are looking at, what they're focused on, what data they need to see. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have someone from our debt team come in okay. and talk about, you know, the kind of deals that they're looking at, the kind of financing that's available, who our competition is, um, you know, that, that kind of information, as well as, you know, being a portfolio manager, um, you know, for the debt portfolio as well. So just, it's really not like a, you know, like a full day on the job. Yeah. It's really about an hour and a half where we get to tell you sort of, you know, highlights of our job, basically. So Got it. We, you know, we have in the past had students come and shadow, you know, our acquisitions um, lead for the day. And, we, you know, it, when we were in the office, that's, that would be challenging to do virtually. I don't know yeah, how yeah. to manage that. But we, we have done that in the past. And that's something that we can certainly be open to once, you know, but, the, you know, I don't even know when we're going back into the office yet, to be honest. It's uh, okay. I'm sure it's still just as insightful. Yeah, I just to get it's really just to give you an idea of the different opportunities that there are available. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to think about, you know, you know, what right right now you're so you know, your your careers haven't really launched, right? You're just about to launch your career. And so it's kind of like you don't know what you don't know. And so I think this is an opportunity to just let you know, hey, these are these are some options out there. These are some, you know, you want to get, you know, when we hire, you know, in the analyst level, we're really the main thing that we're looking for is, you know, your technical skills. I want to know that you know what a DCF is and you know your how to calculate your NPV, how to put a put a DCF analysis together. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of artist instruction at Cal Poly. I know USC and US, UCLA have um, sort of a, an artist course that you can take, but that's something that would be really worthwhile to have. Um, there are separate courses you can take to, to, to get a certificate. Um, if, you, if you mean to be in the institutional space, then I think it's really important to have at least familiarity with Argus Enterprise. Um, it's an, it's an expensive program. You have to have a license. It's, it's very locked down. So, um, you know, as a, you know, having a student license, is, I think is kind of an investment. Um, it's an investment in your career. If you think you want to be on the institutional side of real estate, you, you don't always need it. If you like multifamily, you know, a lot of folks on multifamily don't use it. And in hotels, a lot of folks, mm -hmm. don't, there's proprietary models that you would have. But if you're thinking other kinds of investment, then Argus is, you know, is a, is a tool that everyone in our office uses just about daily, except for me. I'm not using Argus anymore, <laughs> but everyone else is really using it. But, but before you even use Argus, it's more important to really understand the fundamentals of how you value real estate, like what to look at. Uh, you know, um, I know that there's valuation courses at Cal Poly. I know I took them. Um, but that's really where it comes down to is, is understanding that how to value real estate. Uh, Cal Poly does actually have, uh, the Argus training. It's, ah, that's awesome. Good. Yeah. They offer it once a year. They haven't said anything about, they haven't said anything about it this year, but it's usually around November that they offer it. Is it like a six week course or, um, it's virtual and I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember. To chime yeah. in on that, that, actually, it's actually supposed to be only two weeks, but mm. since it was virtual, the virtual transition, they extended it to 120 days. Mm. Uh, the good thing is that they offer, like, student price, which we only pay $100 yeah. for it, but online, uh, I found it pretty difficult because, like, in person, I feel like you had more assistance and online it's like you're kind of thrown the Argus and like the modules and they're like, figure it out, which I think Argus, it's you, it's kind of complicated, I believe. I think that you you need some kind of assistance to to see if you, you know, to check the numbers and, and, and mm -hmm. so on, but uh, that's, that is great. I, I've been looking into Argus as well. 
I, if you, if you thinking, if you're thinking you want to be in commercial real estate and you think you want to be on the institutional side of commercial real estate, it's an absolute must have. It's absolutely, you know, you need to know Excel first, right? You have to have, you know, you have to have really mad Excel skills because you're just working in that all day, every day. But, but if you can get that Argus experience, if you can at least say on your resume, you've taken this course or you've got this certificate or you, you're familiar with it, you've opened it, you've seen what it looks like, you know, don't oversell yourself and say, you know, I'm, a, I'm proficient or I'm an expert if you're not. But the fact that you looked at it and opened it up is, is huge, especially, you know, coming right out of undergrad. It's, I think, a really important tool to have um, when you're, when you're going to be looking for, you know, job opportunities. It's interesting because um, I kind of get mixed things from different people about Argus. Like there's a handful that say, is, oh, it's, you need it, you have to get it. And then there's another handful that says, no, it's not really necessary. We don't really use it in our company. Like um, I, I'm interning at an appraisal company and my boss, we never use Argus. What? I mean, I, we, I don't see it at all. Yeah, that's shocking. We went and hired an appraisal firm that didn't use it. Um, you know, we're looking at larger assets. I mean, that's maybe a little bit of it. It's, um, you know, they're, they're I, I'm really kind of stunned. Yeah, I'm really kind of, that's that's really surprising. I mean, the company does have, they, they ha have a license with Argus, but I rarely see it used. And I asked my boss yeah. too. He said he, he rarely uses it. It's <laughs> just co-star. Yeah, CoStar. Yeah, CoStar is so important. Um, they really got a lock on the market. People are not happy with CoStar, but um, but they they've got strong strong data, and there are some other you know competing platforms to CoStar that are coming out with some really good data in it as well. But I, I would say CoStar is probably still the leader. Um, I just can tell you, only tell you from my experience. I've been on the institutional side for you know thirty years now, and I've always used Argus in, oh, wow. in some format. Yeah. I, you know, I don't use it anymore because I basically, you know, they changed the format probably five years ago, six years ago. And I just was like, you know, this is when I step back. So I look at, you know, the cash flows that are printed off or, you know, they send them to me and, and I look at those cash flows because the cash flow needs to tell the story of your asset, right? So if you're, you know, if you've got a property and, you know, let's say you, you know, you know, it rolls over 50% of it rolls over in year five, you're going to look in year five and see that dip in your cash flow. And then in year six, you're going to have TIs and your leasing commissions. And then you're going to have your bump in your revenue, but you may also have a lag because you have free rent. That story is on your spreadsheet. You can tell what's happening on your spreadsheet. And then you're what's what, at the property. You can tell that story. Um, so to me, I mean, and that's what you're using. Argus is a great tool. It can be a little bit of a black box because you're just really putting inputs and you're not seeing necessarily how the calculations are made. And that's why you need to be able to do that on Excel on your own to really understand it. But, but when you're talking about, a, you know, a million square foot office building with 55 tenants, there's no way to analyze that, but with Argus. Got it. So, so you would I think it, I think it really depends if you're going to be on the institutional side versus non-institutional. I think that's maybe where the key difference is. But mm -hmm. I every institutional investor requires an Argus model. Except so you, maybe multifamily and hotels. Okay, so you would say that an appraisal company should be using it. 100%. And if it doesn't it's, if it's going to Yeah. It doesn't depend like what kind of property that that's being appraised. It is mostly I commercial. If it's if it's multifamily or hotel, a lot of times you'll have your you know your own models for those property types. I don't think those are as conducive for Argus. But if it's a you know if it's an otherwise an income producing property, then you know we always have Argus, and we require Argus on everything on, on the multifamily as well as hotels. So. Um, I think it's very, I think it's very, very helpful. It's one of the things that we look for um, on resumes uh, from people, um, and I don't even need them to be you know, proficient in it. 
I just, you know, the fact that they've looked at it, they've tootled around in it, they've, you know, went through a program and, you know, have their certificate, you know, tells me at least they've been, you know, they're a little familiar because we usually end up sending all of our analysts to a two-week program to, to really, you know, learn artists a little bit better. Got it. Thank you for that. Yeah. Kevin, I, I have a question besides, uh, Looking for Argus in the resume, what else do you look for in uh, the resume? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I think Cal Poly offers a lot of really great real estate specific courses. So I would even go ahead and list some of those, you know, whether it's valuation, whether it's DCF analysis, whether I forget what the names of the courses even are anymore. But, you know, I would even list some of those courses, especially as you're going to get your, first, you know, you're looking for your first career out of undergrad, right? Um, any kind of internships that you were involved with are important to list as well. And then I would just, you know, um, I, I think that's important. I always like seeing, I always like seeing, you know, just kind of like something about, you know, what do you like to, you know, do you like to ski? Do you like animals? Do you have, you know, dog training, what, you know, just like a little travel, you know, it's always kind of nice to get that piece of it too. Um, but but for now, I would say, you know, the jobs that you've worked on, which may or may not be as relevant, but then the courses that you've taken and any kind of certifications that you've received as a, you know, revolve around real estate. I think that's important to have. Um, and then I would, you know, if you can get into an internship, you know, that's very helpful to list those as well. Yeah. Why, sometimes it's even like, you know, talking about why you like real estate, what made you decide to be a real estate, you know, what made you decide to have this major, you know, were your parents in it, were your friends in it, did, did your friend flip a house, did you flip a house, are you thinking, you know what I mean, even that stuff, we're all real, we're all kind of real estate nerds, we love talking about real estate, we joke about it, my husband thinks I'm the biggest nerd ever, because we make all these little real estate jokes, but I'm like, I just can't help it, I really enjoy it, and, and, you know, sometimes we'll get resumes where people are, you know, they finished their undergrad, maybe they took a real estate class or two, they're not quite sure where they want to be in, in finance, right? And, you know, I think if you think, if you want to be in on the commercial real estate side, I think it's really important to, you know, kind of emphasize that in your resume as well. Like, you know, what you, it, the things that you like about real estate, how it can affect a community, how it's tangible, how it, you know, you know, questions revolving around real estate even. So I would, um, I would think about that in, as part of your resume and certainly as part of your, um, you, you know, when you interview. I think it's also, you know, like I said, my first job out of school was through a friend I knew. Uh, he, he knew a company that was hiring, they needed a, you know, someone right out of school, you know, for appraisal. And so it just, and I, I wanna say, four of the of my five jobs that I received, including my job at MetLife, it was through my network. It was through people that I knew. Not necessarily that I had done deals with, right? But just through, through organizations. So I think that, that would be good too for your resume to join something like ULI Young Leaders. It's very affordable. I wanna say it's like, I don't know, $120 or something to join. There's a young leaders group where you really get exposure to more senior people in, in the real estate community. And then you also can start to build your network. It's unfortunate that the, everything is kind of virtual right now, but it's, you know, but it's a way to build that network. And then you just never know. And then they also have, you know, a lot of postings. We always put any openings we have, you know, on their board to make sure it's posted to, to ULI young leaders. So ULI is one, NAOP is one. Uh, BOMA is one if you're really interested in kind of like the structural aspects of real estate, uh, like the, the you know, purely physical aspects of real estate. Um, but I think I think things like that would be really important. Like what you what have you done outside of school to show and advance your career in real estate or your interest in real estate? Um, I've also been hearing that um, firms are also looking at skills such as different data analytic tools, such as uh, Python, R, Tableau. I don't know if 
if that's something that you think is necessary? Um, you know, in our in our headquarters, um, I would say they're probably looking at more of those tools um, in the in our regional. So our, we're headquartered in New Jersey, um, and then we have seven domestic regional offices. In our in our domestic offices, we're 100% focused on on the real estate. So we're looking at either lending on, investing in, or managing real estate in some way. All of that data is then we have a risk research team of, uh, I don't know, it's probably like 15 people by now, um, where they're looking at all the analytics and the data. And then they're, you know, they're feeding to us kind of like, that helps us understand, you know, our strategy, the markets that we want to enter, maybe markets we want to exit, property types we would like to invest in, especially like as we're starting to look at more alternative property types, you know, what kind of multifamily are we, you know, do we think, it, one, is there enough product out there for an institutional investor to to be in, because we are a larger we are a larger investor, and um, and so that's where most of those those skills are coming in. I think they're probably really helpful, um, but we're not using them in in our regional level. And it also depends. Like, do you want to do you want to be you know the the analyst, right? Like, do you want to be the getting the data? and interpreting the data and reporting the data and rec making those recommendations? Do you wanna be, you know, on the real estate, you know, walking the property, you know, you know, that, you know, it's also like, what do you like kind of, you know, if you like the idea of the big data and narrowing it down to figure out what really makes sense for an investment, then, you know, I would, I would always go about what, you know, what you really enjoy, what aspect of it did you, if you really love that piece, Maybe that's, you know, where you should sort of follow your career because it's a long time. Like I'm ready to retire, right? I've been doing this for a long, long time. I still, I really, I really enjoy it. Um, I like all the people that I work with, I, you know, I, you know, I like the kind of investments that we get to make, um, but, you know, you want to be happy. You know, it's a long time to work. You want to enjoy what you're doing. And so I would also just say, you know, try to get as much different experience as you possibly can. You just don't know what's going to like, you know, float your boat, right? Like you may absolutely love multifamily and not, you know, really want to, to dive into any other property types, but you don't know if you haven't, you know, worked in industrial or you haven't, you know, been exposed to retail and you may, or, you know, a lot, a lot of folks usually come to us and say they really just want to be um, in acquisitions, right? Most people want to be in acquisitions. More people are saying they want to be in equity asset management. Um, but then we, you know, we had an intern and she, we had her work on our debt production side and she didn't think she would like it, but she absolutely loved it. And, you know, now uh, she uh, actually went to a competitor and is doing, you know, incredibly well on, uh, as a real estate producer. And there's a lot of debt funds out there. It's not that there's any less or more money. Um, it's really just having that skill set. But like if I'm I'm really kind of like transaction oriented. I, I love the deal, right? I used to do debt debt production for most of my career and then I did acquisitions. I love the deal. I like the, you know, competing for it. I like winning it. I like underwriting it. I'm all about the transaction. If you like the transaction, if that gets you going, then debt production could be a really great spot because you're doing a lot, a lot of deals. You're doing a lot more deals on debt than you'll ever do on the asset on the acquisitions front. You know, so I think it's just, you know, be open to other opportunities too, but. Um, I had a question. Um, you were talking about how we should look at different resources to kind of like, like Argus and stuff like that. I was wondering what are some other recommendations that you have to kind of learn more about commercial real estate other than taking classes? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I do. I do think like organizations like ULI can be really helpful. Um, they have a lot of, you know, the, the, and they're a lot are free uh, once you're a member um, where you can listen in to uh, various, you know, industry experts on a panel. Uh, and they're talking about the market, or they're talking about specific property type, or they're talking about, you know, debt financing. Um, and so I think there's a lot to be learned there. Um, 
And then they, they also have a number of like mentoring opportunities and um, networking opportunities. I think that's really valuable. Honestly, I, um, I did not do any of that when I was in undergrad. I didn't even know it, it existed, to be honest. And um, the amount of networking that I see undergraduate students doing these days is really kind of surprising, but it's also, it's really good. You wanna build that network. And, and the nice thing is, is that you start building that network and you get to know other people in the industry and, in, you know, in other areas of Southern California or of the country, and you all kind of grow up, you know, through that industry. And then before you know it, you're like me and, you know, all the people that I shared cubes with are now managing directors, principals at, you know, at these organizations. And, and so your network kind of grows up with you, but so I, I, I would highly recommend, you know, an organization like NAOP or ULI. Um, it's, you know, there's a small, I'd say it's a small investment um, of, you know, cost. It's a fairly small cost. I think what you can get out of it is, you know, it's well worth it. I, and I'm not, you know, I belong to ULI, but I'm not like, I'm not on their, their board of directors. I'm totally not trying to like sell it, but I, I see the, I see the benefits of it. And I see the benefits of it, especially if you're coming out of an undergrad, um, you know, and you're kind of, you're like, where do I even start sort of thing? Yeah, you, I've seen that ULI is pretty helpful. I went to one of their, um, women's networking programs for the internships yeah and I was able to meet a lot of professionals that were like amazing there and there and I feel like when you have that connection of like women that are doing so well in this industry it really helps out too was that in down was that recently in down like uh well before COVID down yeah it was the one in the CBRE um, yeah I yeah. was at that one I was one really of the, I was one of the mentors yeah yeah I was um I got connected to Amber Scott from Northwestern Mutual because of them. So it was really good. Cool. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, no, they they do a lot. There's a lot of that. Um, and there's a real emphasis in diversity in real estate right now. I don't know if you realize, but a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of um, white males in commercial, in a lot of industries, but in commercial real estate. And, and so, you know, when I joined, I was, you know, always the only woman in the room, always. Uh, and I'm still kind of mostly the only woman in the room. Um, you know, you know, we want that diversity, diversification. We we want that you know difference in background. Um, you know, I don't want to hire someone that just you know is exactly like me, right? I want those. I want that that difference. Um, and so it's it's there's a lot of uh, I would say demand, I guess, for women and minorities in commercial real estate, especially, especially on the institutional side, right? Um, so, so. Yeah, I'm glad that you went. That's great. I know. I know. I remember a couple, there were a couple of people I felt like that had Cal Poly. It's primarily U, USC, right? And and a couple of people from UCLA. And then I think I saw like maybe two, I got a whole stack of uh, the resumes. But then, you know, but then we, we didn't really hire at all this past year, unfortunately. But the, those, those kinds of programs where you get, you know, let's say, you know, you go to something like that and you meet one or two people, you know, you follow up and, you know, people, you know, we want more diversity in commercial real estate. I'm all, I always go to, I used, you know, it's harder, you know, well, now it's probably easier because you can do an easy little virtual, you know, conversation. But would always go to you know lunch or coffee or something to just kind of talk about you know career development. Um, and we, I think I mentioned it early. We want to make sure who we know, who we talk to with respect to diversity um, at Cal Poly, whether it's the same group or whatever. But um, um, my coworker is um, she's on the board of directors for NAOP. She's very active, and and uh, you know there's a there's a lot of focus to try to increase um, the diversity in real estate. Period, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we have about ten. 
Go ahead, Kevin. Talk to you a little about uh, internships. Um, when when applying to internships, is there something that you're looking for? Uh, let's say uh, uh, training such as Argus before uh, you know they get started with internships. You know, I think if you can, I mean, I wouldn't wait to to you know start applying to internships if if Argus is only being offered once a year. Um, I you know I. I think it's the same thing that you're, you know, on your resume, right? Like why, you know, what have you done outside of your um, coursework that demonstrates an interest in real estate? Have you joined an organization? Are you involved in the industry some way? Um, are you taking courses like Argus? Are you, you know, are you listening to these various panels or what, you know, displaying that I think, especially, you know, like, you know, when you're looking for your first job, I think that's what will help you to stand out. Um, I think it's always really good too to, you know, go on LinkedIn, uh, creep around, <laughs> as we say in our office, uh, you know, and see who you know that may have a connection to this organization. Or I, I, we've hired people. They've you know, reached out to me. They knew they were going to be interviewing with me. He reached out to me out of the blue on LinkedIn. I, I a lot of people may not respond. I responded. Uh, we ended up hiring, and part of it, he stood out because he did that little extra step of reaching out to me. You know, like okay, this is someone that's really, you know, he's determined. He wants this. He he's excited about this opportunity. He was working at CBRE at the time. And um, I mean that, I wouldn't say we, we hired him only for that reason, but it certainly helped him stand out. So even on internships, if you know, an organization's you know, providing an internship, you know who you're gonna be meeting with, look them up on LinkedIn, reach out to them, right? The worst case scenario is they don't respond and, and you know, worse off. Best case scenario is they're like, oh, whoa, Kevin's just reached out to me, you know, you know, maybe we should, you know, really bring him in. He's putting that little bit of extra effort in. Now, I want to go crazy and reach out to every single person on that team, right? You don't want to, you know, come across as like psycho, but which we have happened in our office where like someone reached out to everybody and we're like, whoa, this is a little too much, you know, but, but I, I would look and reach out to, you know, a couple of people if you think, you know, and just, hey, you know, I'm going to be, you know, just a little introduction, right? They may or may not respond, but you know, you know, worse for doing it. I, I think that's really important to do. And then reach out to your network. You know, you're interviewing, you know, a lot of times, sometimes these groups have like, you know, um, needs, you know, kind of a need, you know, you start out with it sort of like leads and needs, you know, I, I need a lead on this or I have this need. Um, and, you know, you're, you're gonna go for an internship like with uh, Lee and Associates, you know, they presented here before. You can reach out to that person, hey, you presented at Cal Poly before, I'm gonna be going for, you know, not in her group, not in her office, not in her state, still reach out to her. Hey, do you know, I'm gonna be interviewing or going for an internship in, you know, wherever, San Diego, um, do you know someone that I should reach out to? Do, do that, you have to be really proactive. There's a lot of, unfortunately now more, I would say than kind of ever, because, you know, there, there's probably been a little bit of a lag in hiring. Uh, I think that will probably loosen up a little bit. I think real estate is, you know, we're feeling a little bit better about what's happening with the pandemic and the, the vaccination. And there seems to be a feeling that, you know, the summer will be, will be better and then the fall will be better than the summer. There's a little concern about, you know, fourth wave in the winter, like people get too lax and we're, you know, we're, but, but by 2022, you know, we feel like from what, and this is only, this is not Matt life. This is just like, I'm reading this all the time <laughs> on my phone. Like what's, you know, what's the expectation here? Um, and when are we getting back to normal? And that feels like 2022, but, but, you know, if, if you have an internship that you're really interested, reach out to them. Hey, I'm going to be interviewing. I just wanted to reach out and let you know I'm a student at Cal Poly. I graduate here, you know, this time. What, you know, what I do research. I've had interviewees come in and 
I'm amazed at the information that they've been able to, like, they know that we have properties on Wilshire and they know what they're called, you know what I, you know? And it's like, hmm, he's doing a little research. I like that. You know, I want someone that's a self-starter. I want someone that has initiative. I want someone that doesn't need to be told, you know, every single, you know, this is what you need to do every single moment. If you show that to me coming into an interview, I'm going to like, ah, Kevin's got it going on. He did some research. He figured out who we were. He knew what position he was interviewing for. Also, make sure you proof, 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 proof your resume and send it to someone else to proof your resume before you send it over to the person that you're going to be interviewing with. We've received a lot of resumes that have, I can't even tell you how many typos. And right there, I'm like, we're not, if you cannot have a clean resume, we are not hiring you because that's something that should have been looked over. I can't tell you how many times, right? So make sure that resume is clean. Have, ten, you know, you guys should, you should, you should circulate resumes amongst each other so you can each kind of, you know, comment on it. But that's right away, you're, you know, you are, you're showing who you are on a piece of paper. That piece of paper needs to most accurately reflect you and errors will be, a ref, is a clear, you know, reflection, right? So make sure that resume is clean. I only say this because we've had people come in with resumes that were like shockingly embarrassing, frankly. Yeah. For a scholarship uh, search, uh, would you recommend uh, was it uh, ULI or or other organizations? Um, for mm -hmm. For scholarships? Um, for, internships, for internships. Oh, internships. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, ULI usually has a good board, internal, you know, board of positions as well as internships that are available. So I think that's a good way. I think that's a good one to start. I think NAOP does as well. I don't know if you need to join both of them. Um, ULI is probably a little bit more, I would say, in Southern California. There's also CREW, which is a women's network. Uh, and I'm all for supporting women, believe me. I want to be in a, an organization where I get access to everyone in real estate, not just the women in real estate. So I'm not a, a crew member because I want to. I want to be. I want to be talking with people, everyone that's in real estate, not just the women. But I do try to support those for me, like those women initiatives, right? Um, or those minority initiatives. Um, but. But, you know, it's it's good to just have your network. Yeah, but I, I would say ULI is a good place to probably find those find those internships. Um, you know, I think you can put in like uh, search parameters into Indeed, you know, for, you know, you can, you know, if you search for, you know, real estate analyst internship or something, I think then they can probably, can probably spit out some, you know, anything that meets your your filters then it can probably spit those up. Um, if you know of organizations that had internships in the past, you know, look on their website also or reach out to, you know, to folks. A lot of brokerages have good uh, internships. They usually hire, you know, more people. Like we might have one internship a year at the most um, where the brokerage firms may have like 20 to 30. Um, CBRE has a really great internship program uh, East still has a great internship program. I think JLL has one. Um, um, Newmark probably has a really good uh, internship program. Uh, I would; uh, those are all commercial brokerage organizations, and so you'll get good. You'll, you you may not be interested in being a broker. You may not realize. You know, may not think that you are. But it's right now at this point, you're just trying to get the experience, right? You're just trying to get the end. So I would be open to kind of whatever is out there. Banks are another organization that have really good internship programs. So, you know, City, Wells, Bank of America, um, US Bank, um, HSBC, you know, they all have, you know, they, they, they all have pretty strong internship programs, especially Wells, I think in Southern California is from what I've, what I've told, been seeing. And, and they'll, they'll hire, you know, a big group at a time, um, which I think is kind of helpful. And then that's, you know, you can start building from there. Thank you. Yeah, you need, you need to be proactive though. This is, 
you know, you, you're, you're the ones that are kicking off your career. You need to be out there and engage. It's another job, frankly, right? Looking, you know, looking for those internships and what you're focused on. Uh, don't be, I want to be so, so focused. You want to be open to opportunities, but, but it takes work. It, you're going to be hoofing it, you know, talking to people and, and getting outside of your comfort zone potentially to, you know, introduce yourselves to other, other people in the industry, but it will make you stand out. Let me just say, you know, it'll, it's helpful. Thank you, Jackie. Um, you bet. People are already dropping off for class. Um, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time. It was very inform informative. Yeah, um, no, thanks for having me. It's I should have done this years ago. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's okay. Better late than here. never. Yeah, we're here now. And then, um, you know, should I just have my coworker call you about the diversity and? Um, oh yeah, of course. Either call me, uh, email me. I'll email you after this. Okay, great. As a as just to follow up. And then I'd also be interested in, um, you know, when I was at Cal Poly, I went a scholarship here and there. And so it's something that I've been wanting to do. So I would also like to um, understand how I can provide a scholarship, a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, of course. Um, it would it would be through the FRL chair, Wei Yu. So I could email her and I'll CC you. Is that, that would, fine? Yeah. Or I could provide her email. That would be terrific. Okay, awesome. Yeah, if you could, if you can send me that information, because that's something that I would like to do as well. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you want to put your information in the chat for maybe the everyone else to contact you. Can you just go ahead and can you just circulate my contact information? Oh, yeah, of course. We'll do that. And you have my whole, you have like my phone numbers and all that stuff, right? On there. Like uh, it would be the signature of your. Yeah, email. the signature block. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can just awesome. you can circulate that. That way you've got my number as well as my email address. And okay. really, and I, and I sincerely mean this. If you, if you would like to chat for it, um, I can give you sort of <laughs> my thoughts after being in, you know, being in commercial real estate my whole career, which is a little unusual as well. I think uh, a lot of people start out in different careers and then sort of switch. Um, and just, you know, it's really just only my perspective, right? But, um, but I, I can tell you what, what I wish I would have done differently early in my career and what I'm glad I, what I did do that I'm, I'm very happy that I did. Um, so feel, feel, honestly, I'm more than happy to chat. Um, so feel free to reach out. This week, I uh, am, in, I'm, actually, it's kind of a bad week for me. But um, starting next week, I have a lot more availability. So okay. if I don't, I'll get back to you, but I won't be able to talk to you this week. That's sure. fine. That's understandable. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. You bet. Good to talk to you. Thanks very much. Have a, have a great day. Time. Yeah, you too. Bye. I'll stay back if anyone has any questions. Hi, uh, she mentioned um, ULI as a. Uh, it's an organization. Yeah. For, for to it's, find it. To, it's called Urban Land Institute. If you just, they're very big. So if you just search up Urban Land Institute, I'll put it in the chat too. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty